the charity gig. Um, thing is, I'm a student. I hardly have any money whatsoever. But all the money I do have, I do end up giving to charity. I know, it's a funny name for a stripper, but she deserves every penny of it. The but... <laughs> thing is, I've seen charity collectors outside Poundland. That is the wrong way to go about service. Like, you're not going to get any there. That would be like advertising for free chlamydia tests outside Games Workshop. It's not going to happen. It's as pointless as ever. But anyway, I mean, for a charity, some of them don't even have a sense of humour. Charity collector came up to me and she went, Oh, do you, would you like to donate some money? And I said, what is it you're doing? And she went, we're treating children with AIDS. And I said, that doesn't sound like much of a treat. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's how you treat money, you punish them. Fuck you, know? Proudest moment on stage, um, as not is not on stage. My proudest moment was sitting in the cinema on Tuesday and showing Ham and Onions. That is definitely the proud and having everyone sit there and just like laugh at something that has taken so long and put so much effort in and that we never thought would ever be done. And I didn't even think it was funny anymore. Then you sit there, like I said, in the audience, full of your friends, and that the, no one's ever seen it before and they're laughing. The my proudest moment's got to be just sat there watching Ham and Onions and everyone enjoying it. Yeah, that's a proud moment. My last year of A-level, uh, Journey's End performance, I got the top grade, highest marks for that, and made audience members cry, which was good. Yeah, that I was. That was my proudest performing moment. Winning the best actor award at, at, at the local drama festival. Um, that was back in when was it? Two thousand and something or other. 2005, I think, but I, 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 up a week of drama, so I think there was about 20 odd plays. Um, and I won the award for Best Act Day, it was playing um, Lomov in The Proposal, uh, Anton Chekhov, one act comedy. Now, this is the interesting thing with Chekhov, because it's been connected with um, uh, serious Stanislavski stuff. It's it's perceived as serious, whereas if you get the right translation of Chekhov, it's, it's the funniest stuff. It's, it's almost like slapstick, some of it. But you have to have the right tr translation. And that's so difficult with Russian, because of the various regional uh, dialects and peculiarities. So for me, that would probably be, yeah, probably the proudest moment amongst many. I have to say. Uh, when I played The Stand Comedy Club in Glasgow last week, it's where, uh, I don't know, it's one of the venues where I've, do you know when you think uh, I could, as, if I do anything with comedy, I'll play The Stand and then I've had a good career and I did it last week and I've just started, do you know what I mean? The Stand's the best, in my opinion, the best venue for comedy in, the, in England, uh, the UK, sorry, Scotland. Um, uh, that's be my dream was to play the stand and I've done it. So that's my proudest moment, definitely. I think just getting on stage, people should be proud. Like a lot of people say that doing comedy is easy and it's a bit of a dos. But I think to get on, like I never intend to do stand up again, like I'm so into the written stuff. But I think just to get up and do it is such a brave thing. That like regardless of whether it goes well or not, that you've got the balls to go up there and do it. I think that means quite a lot. I think it's quite a test of your own strength. And then if you remember your material on top of that and manage to deliver it well, then I think that's really brave. I think the first time I got up on stage, that must be quite a popular answer, I think. I don't know. First time I got up on stage was good. It was in a pub in Bedford. And I'm quite proud of that because that was like the first step I took to be like, this is what I want to do. Like, Good luck, me. <laughs> and I got up and I told some um, bad jokes. Um, I wanted to be like, because I really like Bill Hicks, obviously. Everyone does. And I was like, yeah, man. Let's deliver a fucking message. <laughs> Represent. Um, so I was talking about, like, um, airports and, like, 9-11 and stuff. Um, and then being daft on the side. And I think a bunch of people afterwards were like, you were you're good, but... You know, like, go easy. But I think that was such a proud moment because because it didn't go well as well. It didn't go badly, but it didn't go great. But it was I was proud of that because I got up, I did it. Sure, it didn't go great, but then I kept doing it. And now I'm still doing it. 
because I wasn't happy with my persona. I didn't know what my persona was. Because I, I, I got up for the first gig, wanted to come up, do the whole, hey, you know, this, that, and didn't. And I just sort of stood there and it wasn't me. And so just for the gong show, I just went nuts. And I remember it was, pro it was maybe the most nervous I've ever been in my life. I felt sick. I, just before they killed my name, I actually thought, okay, I can't do it, I'm going to run out the door. But I didn't, they called my name too quick, and I just went on. And the pure adrenaline that I got from it, and I can't, there's no video of it, apparently, which I'm gutted about. But it's the one gig I think people most remember, because I just went on. You, I can't narrow it down to you because any time where somebody laughs at something you wrote, you think it is worth it. When people, when when people, when you when you go on and when I, when you uh, you do your last gag and people laugh and you think, well, that's my ten minutes or that's my five, and people give you a clap, and you think, well, yeah, it is, it is worth going up there again because you, you, I mean, most people shit themselves, don't they, before they go on. You think, why am I doing this? Why do you, why, you know, why can't I just pick a normal job and it's 9 to 5 and it's one hour job in the night or whatever you're doing. Uh, but I think, yeah, I mean, cause there's not many jobs that when you get introduced people got to clap. There's not many people's jobs that people laugh because it is uh, like, a, well, I think it's a reward. Because if you stood in the street and you were telling jokes, how many people would listen to you? You don't know, do you? If you went out there and said you ate immigrants, you would be in the paper. I'm doing a degree, oh yes I'm doing a degree, so I can spend my life in poverty. Now my lecturer's redundant, and the future's not too bright, as we're now taught by the cleaners, who only work at night. All the money's gone on admin, so they can send out bulky mails that get lost in the ether, or possibly in Wales. I'm doing a degree, oh yes I'm doing a degree, so I can spend my life in poverty. So my debt is slowly rising and the stress is getting worse. I'd like to kick a Tory till they end up in a hearse. Vince Cable made a promise, now we see that was a lie. I wish he'd move to Bournemouth and dare just slowly die. I feel very proud when I organise and compare a gig and I get some acts up and they have a great time. My proudest moment, or, or one of the ones I can I think off the top of my head, was again this gig I did about a week or two weeks ago. And it was literally, I mean, I'd done new material I'd written the day before two six to seven minute sets and I'd done impro and we had a crowd there was literally there were students in one corner of the room it's quite difficult I mean you've played it yourself that, that, that venue students in one corner of the room about a third of them some like metal heads in their mid twenties some of them it was their birthday and then a group of people who were probably at least forty and they'd come to see one of the acts I put on that night and it was just beautiful to be able to play to all three crowds and get strong laps all the time from all three and at the end of the night I literally said this has been one of my favourite gigs to do, I've had so much fun. I said I want to thank the special guests who turned up and we didn't know they were going to turn up. You know, the, the birthday boys, the guy who did this thing with a tattoo and this guy who I said, what's your name? He went, eh, it's Jim. He did that, oh what do you do? Eh, I'm a mechanic. My best one was uh, the gong show where I wrote some really good material with uh, Chris Munro like, about chimps tearing off faces which like haunted me. And then like, I just freaked out on stage and ended up just like finishing all the material well too quickly. I was still like, hadn't been gonged off. And then I just like shoved all the paper in my mouth and just pretended to choke on it. <laughs> that went down quite well. And I was fucking second. Alec Dent beat me. Probably when, really recently, when I emceed a gig and I, I told a joke that I hadn't written. It's just because someone was talking about Valentine's Day, so I went up after them and told a joke about Valentine's Day. And I never thought I'd tell a joke involving a boyfriend. One, because I thought I'd never have one, and two, because I get really shy <laughs> talking about things like that. Um, so yeah, that's probably quite... that was a bit of a breakthrough in the whole awkward front. Probably my first gig. That was my proudest moment that I got up there, so I'm pretty proud of that. That I managed to, like... Do it. <laughs> yes. Oh, what was that like? <laughs> that was. <coughs> it was 
I remember there was like a gap where I forgot something because I've got really bad memory and that, that was really scary, that felt like that was going on for ages but after that it was really fun and then I was kind of like ooh this is, this is kind of fun for a while and then I did it again and then slowly the fun <laughs> got sucked out of me but then it got better sometimes or it got worse yes well I guess a non-comedy one is when I played Agatha and Frankenstein when I was like 12 and then a little girl in the audience was like Daddy, I didn't know that girl goes to my school. I didn't know she was blind. So it looked like I was, yeah. But then here, probably when like I got my first clap in the Avondale, I think, and that was pretty good, like to get a clap. What is a single clap? <laughs> it was literally one. No, it was a few like applause. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah. Like, they laughed, and then they went like that. Okay. <laughs> I just described the clap for you. Okay. Definitely, like, my first gig, that was it. Like, um, just when I got up on stage and I started my first joke, and as soon as I told it, it got, like, a laugh, and then that made me feel, like, really confident, and um, I said the next one, and people were laughing more, and... Then at that stage I was like proper buzzing, like um, and uh, just got uh, got through my whole set, like making everyone laugh, and I think it was just that feeling of like you've done good, like, everyone enjoyed it, and it was just brilliant, like to, to know that the jokes you've written down and you've worked at them, and you're not really sure at the time like whether they're gonna work, and you're a bit sort of like at the moment you're like oh this is gonna go bad, and um, we got on stage did the set and everyone was enjoying it and laughing and it was just brilliant. I was I finished my set and as I said, right, I'll see you later everyone, you've been wonderful. And as soon as I said that and it was clapping and cheering. Uh, probably, I was, I was about to fart and I stopped it. The joke that I use, the pineapple joke, because uh, I just sort of thought of that the night before. Unfortunately I've just given the punchline away. Um, but yeah, it's the first time I ever used the prop with the pineapple about drinking water and eating pineapple makes your sperm taste nice. I'm going to ask a girl, did you know that? Drink water, are you interested? No, and then I left my cup and the pineapple drops and I was very surprised because everyone loved it. Um, it also landed on my foot, which hurt a bit, but so my proudest moment yet most painful moment on stage. That was it, really. How can you tell? No, it's not right. <laughs> How can you tell where a loaf has been hurt in a fight? Bread always falls battered side down. <laughs> <laughs> my, my girlfriend takes care of overstaffing problems in the sweet biscuit industry. She's a cookie cutter. <laughs> those jokes. <laughs> it's 12 here, six months. It's not productive. <laughs> you know, it's almost like as if people like me aren't meant to be comedians. Because <laughs> you see the TV comedians like a one with their confidence. Oh, we've got the confidence, haven't they? Michael McIntyre just moves his head like that and everyone erupts laughing. <laughs> So Robbie, what about you? What's on your mind? How often do you masturbate? <laughs>